In this video, we're going to be looking at how to build a LangChain chatbot with custom agent and tools, and also a running memory of the conversation. We will be interacting with it through the Streamlit user interface, but on the left side, on the terminal, we will also be seeing the memory of the conversation and the thought processes of the agent. Let's begin by saying hi there. As we see here, we are entering a new agent executor chain. This is the thought process in the green. Do I need to use the tool? Says no. And then response, hi there, how can I help you? And after the chain is finished, it is printing the memory that is currently ongoing. Let's ask it to give us a list of tools available to it. Again, it's entering the agent ex executor chain. It asks itself if it needs to use a tool, answers no, and then says, sure, I have access to the following tools, Fibonacci, source string, Encrypt and decrypt, which are all custom functions, regular Python, Python functions I have defined. And you can see the ongoing history of the conversation here as well. Next, I will ask it the third number of the Fibonacci series in an obscure way. As we see here, it decided to use the tool because it answered yes this time. And it decided on the Fibonacci tool and it decided on the input to the Fibonacci tool, which is three and then it observed the output of the function, which was two. And then it asked itself if it needs to use another tool, it decided that it didn't, and then answered the third Fibonacci number is two, and it is printed right here, along with the entire history of the conversation so far. Next, let's ask it, what is the word three encrypted? This encryption is just defined as a function which just shifts letters, one letter to the right, and it correctly decides to use the encrypt function, and it correctly will displace the output right here, UISF. Now let's ask it to decrypt the word, UISF. And it correctly chooses to use the tool, decrypt, and then it will displace the output correctly as three. Now the final one, the sorted, what is the word three sorted? And this is going to sort it in alphabetical order. And it is deciding to use a tool, which is the correct tool. And it is displaying the result, EEHRT which is correct, also keeping track of the entire conversation. Let's take a look at the code and see how we can build something like this. The requirements for this is very easy. It's only OpenAI link chain and Streamlit. This is it. I just created a new environment. I use Conda, but you can use VMV. All you have to do is pip install OpenAI, pip install link chain, and pip install Streamlit to get this going. I will put a link in the description for link chain's documentation. It's really easy. Quick start guide takes you through pip installing and gets you going pretty quickly. We're going to be using conversational React description agent. We'll get there. Streamlit is the fast way to build and share apps built on Python. And OpenAI's documentation is really wonderful as well. I'll put the links in the description for all those. Feel free to copy this code from the YouTube video, but I will make it available to my Patreon supporters in the link which I'll put in the description. We are importing OpenAI from LangChain and initialized agent and tool from LangChain.agents and the conversation buffer memory from the LangChain.change.conversation.memory. But we could have used other types of memory as well. I have made a video about different types of built-in memory types in LangChain, including buffer memory, summary memory, conversation buffer window memory, conversation summary buffer memory, entity memory, and combined memory. I'll put the link into that video in the description. But for the purposes of the video at hand, we're going to be using the conversation buffer memory, which keeps track of the ongoing conversation as a whole. And we are importing Streamlit to build a UI over this quick little app that we're building. After that, we're simply defining four functions. One of them is called fib. It's a function to calculate the nth Fibonacci number. It takes the number n and calculates nth number in the Fibonacci series. The next one is the sort string. We source the input string alphabetically, really easy, and then returns the string. And here it returns the Fibonacci number. The final function to return a word into an encrypted word. It, this function, this is called, which is called encrypt, takes in a word and just switches the order of letters one to the right. That's it, and returns that. And decrypt does the exact opposite. So we have defined four functions. And then we're defining a tools list using the tool which we have imported right here. Essentially, this is the syntax of defining tools. You need to give it a name, 
and then a function using lambda, here lambda n being string, which is the fib function with the integer n being inserted as the argument. Description is going to be used in the prompt, so this is pretty important. This just says use when you want to calculate the n Fibonacci number. The next one, again defined by the tool with the same syntax, is the sort string, which takes in a string and then inputs that string as an argument to the sort string function. Description is used when you want to sort a string alphabetically. Return direct equals true is commented out here, but from what I could understand, return direct means that the output of the function will be returned after max iteration is reached. Because sometimes an agent re again and again try the same tool or different tools and can get confused sometimes. I guess this return trick makes sure that after a certain amount of attempts that it is eventually going to return the return of the function. Next one is the encrypt. It is done exactly the same using the defining using the tool definition and given the description and decrypt is the same and then we close the list so now we have defined our tools these tools tools could have been anything for example it could have been google search it could have been wikipedia api search anything you can really imagine here i just defined four custom functions and i have defined my two my tools such as this you can also import some built-in tools from langchain as well please look into the documentation for that but this is just to demonstrate that Creating tools is as easy as defining functions. After defining the tools, we are defining our memory with the conversation buffer memory, which we have imported right here. We are setting the memory key to chat history, which is recommended. You can use other memory types as well, as I mentioned earlier. And then we are defining our large language model to be the open AI, temperature zero, verbose true. And then now we're defining the agent chain using the initialized agent, which we have imported up here from late chain that agents we are inputting as arguments the tools which we have defined up here and the m which we have defined right here and then the agent we're defining as the conversational react description agent we'll talk about this in a moment and then we're defining our memory to be the memory which we define here in this case the conversation buffer memory and then we are setting the verbose to be true if the verbose is true then you will be able to see the agent's thought processes. These were the printed lines in the terminal in the green when agent was making decisions and having a thought process. If you set the verbose to false, then the terminal will not print the thought process. Next up is to set a simple streamlit header in the blue color. This is the syntax to give color to streamlit text. And then in square brackets, I say length change chatbot with agent tools and memory. And then I'm defining an emoji, sunglasses. The syntax is presented here. That line was the line which gave us this title and the emoji right here. We are using short-term memory. We're not using any embedded vector store, but I will be making a video about memory in the future as well. And then we are initializing the user input to be a st.txt input. As you remember, we have imported streamlit as st. And what this st.txt input u does is to place this u here in an input box, which we can enter our queries and questions. And now we are initializing the memory buffer. Now the memory is initialized over here, but the way the streamlit runs its scripts is that every time you make an action on the user interface, the entire script runs again. If we were to initialize the memory buffer using the st.session state, is an st.session state memory equals an empty string, then every time we take an action, that session state memory would have been restarted back to an empty string. That's why we're putting a conditional asking that if memory key does not exist in the session state, then we are creating it only one time. And after that, it will exist in the session state. So then we don't have to recreate it again. This way, we can just simply append to it a, a, a moment on onwards. Session state is a streamlit's way of keeping track of some variables which you want to persist over the course of the time that elapses with user interactions in the UI. I recommend checking streamlit's user documentation. It's really wonderful. It's very easy to read and it's a delight. After we have initialized our memory in the session state memory, then we are asking another condition for st.button submit to be clicked or not which is this button right here. This is necessary because once the user have inputted something into the input text, it is better, in my opinion, to engage it with a submit button rather than with the enter entry. So when the button is clicked, 
Then we run the agent underscore chain, which we have defined right here, and then run it with the user input as the input. And then after we've received this response, we're going to write it down as a streamlit markdown, which will appear as such right here under the submit button. And after that, we are just simply appending the memory key from the session state, whatever we have had in the memory dot buffer from the memory which we have initialized with the conversation buffer. Memory is an object and the memory dot buffer is the textual element of the conversation that is ongoing. And simply after that, we are printing the session st dot session state memory into the terminal. We could have also gotten this written onto the UI as well, but I just like to keep it separate because this is ever growing as the conversation goes longer and longer. To start our streamlit UI application, all we have to do is click this arrow button in our terminal, start a command prompt. Make sure you are in the right environment. In this case, I'm not. Once you're in the right environment, you simply type in streamlit and then run and the name of your file, main.py in my case. Once you run this command, Streamlit will give you a local URL and it will pop out a browser window. If the window browser window doesn't pop out, you can copy this link or control click it. After that time, you can start interacting with this application you've written with the user interface. Let's ask what is the tenth number of the Fibonacci series and we are making a typo too, but it shouldn't matter too much. It decides to use the tool and the right tool and it's inputting 10 and getting 55, which is the correct answer. And it is displaying the answer right here. So I hope you enjoy this. Like I said, I will put this code into my Patreon for my Patreon supporters, but I'll browse through it real quick. For those of you who want to copy it from the YouTube video, I'll put the link to my Patreon and also to the Discord channel, uh, Discord server. Please join and chat with us about AI technologies. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Take care.